Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns and it is such a thrill to be back with you to bring you an update on the goings on in the auction industry in Louisiana. And we will be recapping the highlights from the September the 12th of 2016 meeting of the Louisiana Auctioneers Licensing Board uh, and some of the peripheral activities associated uh, therewith. And uh, once again we will be featuring a lesson in continuing education uh, on this particular video uh, and we're going to do so uh, by bringing out yet another lawsuit uh, filed by Henderson Auctions against another out-of-state auctioneer. Uh, and in this particular case the lawsuit has been lodged against uh, a company called WorldNet Auctions operating out of South Carolina. Uh, the principal for WorldNet Auctions is a gentleman named uh, Charles Easler. Charles Easler out of South Carolina. Uh, and let me just say this is a, a continuing trend with Hen Henderson Auctions. Uh, um, Marvin Henderson having been the founder of Henderson Auctions and, and uh, him being recently inducted into the NAA Hall of Fame. Uh, the other prominent auctioneer that has been sued by Henderson Auctions uh, is Nick Clark of Mississippi. And uh, let me just say this, uh, we're going to have a little bit more detail on the second video uh, that we're going to produce on here, but I will just briefly say that, that uh, I had to get into it, if you will, uh, with uh, Mr. Larry Bankston and Miss Sandy Edmonds, Larry Bankston being the attorney for the LALB and Miss Sandy Edmonds, the longtime executive director, many of you who recall she's most famously noted uh, for blatant payroll fraud having been cited for such uh, and so but basically it entailed in this uh, uh, situation with Mr. Clark which all has to do with the Blake Everett lawsuit uh, and I'll give you that update in a second video on it uh, but there was a gentleman who wanted to file a complaint uh, against Mr. Henderson uh, entailing this whole situation and uh, we'll discuss that in more detail in the second video uh, but I'll just let you know that things are progressing along in that lawsuit as well. Uh, Mr. Henderson has, Marvin Henderson that is, has had to retain individual counsel to represent himself because effectively uh, he is a, in being sued by his own son. That's what it amounts to. We'll have more details in that second video. But let me move on to the current lawsuit that entails, and we'll give you a lawsuit for the actual uh, suit filed against WorldNet Auctions and and um, Mr. Easley, or Easley, I'm sorry, uh, out of South Carolina. But now here's here's the crux of what all is going on in that lawsuit. It's basically a two-part lawsuit. The first part says that in March of 2009 uh, that uh, WorldNet approached Henderson Auctions about auctioning a piece of equipment. Uh, in an upcoming auction and, and uh, by and looking at the pleadings that Henderson filed into uh, 21st JDC which is in Livingston Parish. Uh, it says that okay Henderson would uh, go ahead and finance uh, the acquisition of the equipment and that would be $31,500, we use some round numbers, $31,500 and basically uh, they would then upcoming auction would sell the equipment and the proceeds would be used to pay back the loan and any profit made above certain expenses on the sale of the equipment would be split 50-50 between Henderson Auctions and WorldNet. And so basically the auction took place, the equipment sold for approximately $48,000 uh, and so you can do the math. You pay back the, the $31,000 or so loan uh, and and uh, the other expenses and so basically in a nutshell uh, of the 48,000 approximate proceeds uh, 41,000 should have gone to uh, Henderson Auctions, JAH Enterprises aka Henderson Auctions and 7,000 would go to WorldNet. Now that isn't what happened, Henderson Auctions remitted the entire balance, the entire proceeds up to WorldNet and then basically said hey look uh, we need to get some of that money back here and there's your core lesson for continuing education in today's video. We're going to put it in big, big letters on the screen. The key word to keep in mind, withhold. 
Doesn't it make common sense that if somebody owes you $41,000, wouldn't it be a lot more efficient, a lot smoother to, out of the proceeds, the $48,000, to withhold $41,000 and only remit a check for $7,000 to WorldNet and say, look, here's your share. Here's an accounting. Here's your share. What sense did it make to remit the entire $48,000? Oh, by the way, we need $41,000 back. In fact, some auctioneers that I have talked to in, in wondering about Jeff Henderson, uh, they have readily said, does this guy even have walking around sense uh, to have failed to have withheld these proceeds? Uh, and, you know, <laughs> basically what they're alleging in the lawsuit is that uh, uh, WorldNet did make some payments toward the 41000 uh, but the balance remaining on it was 26000 that they never got from WorldNet. Uh, and so their suit says, hey, we, and I'm using just round numbers here. You're welcome to get the exact numbers by looking at the lawsuit. They said, hey, look, you owe us $26,000. Now that entails the first phase. Remember I told you it was a two-part, basically two-element lawsuit. The second element has to do with the inner dealings of a company called Lottie Group. Lottie Group. Now, Lottie Group was an entity that was formed by Henderson Auctions in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina uh, when the federal government needed to disp uh, dispose of thousands of these FEMA trailers. Uh, and so Lottie Group uh, put in, it was a group of investors, quite a few of whom I understand are auctioneers. Uh, and so they went in together and, and uh, they acquired a massive number of FEMA trailers. Uh, from the federal government and then they went to auction them off. Now, obviously trying to get rid of the massive number of FEMA trailers within one geographic region may be a little bit challenging. Uh, and so this lawsuit alleges that uh, in mid, to mid, early to mid 2010 that WorldNet approached JAH Enterprises, Henderson Auctions, and said, hey look, we probably could get a, quite a few of those FEMA trailers sold for you up here in South Carolina. Uh, folk could use them around this neck of the woods. Uh, there was also the problem that the state of Mississippi had said, we're not going to let you auction any FEMA trailers. They were concerned about formaldehyde. That was a big issue, uh, that, that kind of a cloud that over, over hung over these trailers. And Mississippi had said, uh, we're not going to let you auction any in our state. But at any rate, uh, Henderson Auctions and WorldNet, according to the pleadings, made this agreement and they sent about 300 of these FEMA trailers up to South Carolina to be auctioned off and in fact they did auction off about 230. The lawsuit readily admits that hey we got our payment, everything was going along great. Uh, and then the next thing you know they said hey look it'd probably be a good idea if we got the titles to the remaining FEMA trailers up here. So we're talking about 70 trailers and remember the 300 or so Actually, I believe it was 317. We're just going to use round numbers here. Uh, minus the 230 that had been sold with, with no problems and funds remitted. And so uh, the lawsuit alleges that uh, Henderson Auctions went ahead and, and uh, provided the titles to the remaining 70. The, the, the rationale that was provided by WorldNet for needing the titles is that they could have a serious problem on their hand uh, if they were audited by the South Carolina Office of Motor Vehicles, that it would not look good for them to not to have those uh, titles within their possession. So according to the lawsuit, the titles were sent on up there and, uh, and uh, then they said they kind of cut off communication. Uh, they alleged that WorldNet and Mr. Easler kind of cut off communication with Henderson Auctions and they weren't hearing anything and you know, uh, nothing to know how these things are proceeding or whatnot. Uh, and so, uh, they say they sent a pr prospective buyer over to the, the uh, yard at which these FEMA trailers were to have been stored for inventory and they said, hey look, we need you to get a count. See how many of these trailers are out there. And the lawsuit alleges that when this prospective buyer went over to take a look at the available trailers, he says there were only 10. I also said that of those 10, there were I believe 15 to 16 missing tires. Uh, and so, as I said, it, the, the lawsuit alleges there was no further communication. Uh, and so this lawsuit has been initiated uh, saying that, hey, look, we had a binding agreement here. Uh, we got 59 trailers unaccounted for. We don't even know their whereabouts. 
Uh, we also have the 10 that, that uh, you know, uh, no accounting on them that at least we were, somebody was able to lay eyes on at the time that we went and looked at. By the way, the 230 that did sell, they sold, they, in the lawsuit it says they sold for about 3100 a piece. So if you were to assume that the remaining 70 unaccounted for, roughly 70 unaccounted for, were to have similar uh, sales prices, then I guess that would be about uh, 3,000 times, I guess about $320,000 of these things may be worth give or take. So that was the basis of the lawsuit. Uh, it said that, uh, hey, we had a binding agreement. Even if the court were not to find that there was a binding agreement here, uh, that certainly we should be able to prevail under the premise of unjust enrichment. And so basically the lawsuit seeks two parts. It seeks 26000 on that piece of equipment that I told you about earlier and then payment for these, you know, missing in action uh, FEMA trailers, if you will. Now, uh, WorldNet retained counsel in Louisiana uh, and that was in the form of Sherman Mack, interestingly enough. Uh, you may recall Sherman Mack was the attorney whom Henderson Auctions went to uh, as they were pushing for continuing education to be reinstated in the state of Louisiana, an effort which failed because in representing uh, many of the auctioneers, we did show up at the hearings for it and say there's no problem with uh, reinstituting continuing education, but it needs to be uh, the provision for it to be fulfilled online. Uh, and that caused an, an awful lot of uh, the impetus behind reinstating continuing education to fall by the wayside because the theory was pretty well established that this was nothing more than a mechanism to try to force auctioneers to attend uh, the Louisiana Auctioneers Association's annual conventions for which the attendance has fallen off quite dramatically. But at any rate, Sherman Mack filed a standard answer saying that, hey look, we deny, 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 deny. Uh, it's a, we'll give you the link for the answer and then there was a subsequent uh, request to substitute counsel. A gentleman from the firm of Rodell Parsons uh, is now representing uh, Mr. Easler and WorldNet Auctions. And that's about as far as that lawsuit has gone. It's been a good little while since there's been some activity on it. Uh, and you know, as I said, when we first talked to you about the whole Crown Casino, that's the Blake Everett uh, situation, the one thing that is sure to happen in all this is that attorney's fees are going to rack up, all right? Uh, it's more than just a little interesting coincidence that the attorney representing uh, JAH Enterprises in its pursuit of WorldNet Auctions is a gentleman named Wyman Bankston. Wyman Bankston. Uh, now I know that many of you are familiar, who are familiar with the Auctioneers Licensing Board are going to immediately ask, well is it any in relation to Larry Bankston, the attorney for the Auctioneers Licensing Board, one of the attorneys, to which I cannot answer that question. Um, you know, I mean I don't know and quite frankly I would not trust Larry Bankston to give me an honest answer if I ask him. Uh, but it would not surprise me at all for there to be a cozy relationship here. Uh, because I have been very candid and will continue to be candid that I do not believe Mr. Bankston serves as a very effective attorney uh, in protecting the rights of consumers. Uh, I don't wince for words on that and he and I lock horns just about every meeting. Uh, but it would not surprise me for this to be one nice cozy uh, relationship uh, in there. That would not surprise me one bit. So once again, the educational lesson from the continuing education standpoint here is that if you're going to finance uh, the material that you're going to be auctioned on, on behalf of someone else, uh, that's a nice gesture. Everybody appreciates a good bank. Uh, but the, the key thing, and we're going to put it on the screen again, withhold. Withhold your loan proceeds together with anything you were to make on it, which in this case was 50% of the profit, withhold 41000 and only remit 7000 Again, it's a little shocking that folk that have been in the auction business for 60 years would fail to do this. As I said, I had some auctioneers openly ask, does Jeff Henderson have walking around since? I don't know. 
He's on the LALB, but I don't know whether he's got walking around sense or not. I do know that, you know, having to spend all these legal fees when you had total control of the situation, you know, withheld the proceeds. And bear in mind, this is just what's been represented as the Henderson Auctions version of what transpired in this. As one would be well aware from the Crown Casino, the initial filings, <laughs> turned out there was a whole lot more to the story than just those initial filings. But what do you bet that might be the case here too? A little more to it than is presented on the surface. As this lawsuit continues to progress, assuming there's more activity in it, we'll certainly keep you up to date. But always remember, if you're going to be kind enough to finance the acquisition of something for someone else, once you've auctioned it, it would be a good idea to withhold the proceeds, pay back, your, pay back their loan, and only remit to them the net. So that's the moral of this little continuing education. Once again, this is Robert Burns. We hope you enjoy all of the rest of the videos pertaining to this most recent LALB meeting. Thank you so much.